What's up guys, welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 57, and this episode covers my birthday week. I turned 30 at the end of February, and uh, at that time, Andrew just won two American Poker Awards. He won Best Vlogger and Personality of the Year. So uh, we had a meetup game, played some 2-5, and we kind of celebrated those two things. Uh, my birthday was awesome. We went out to Gold Spike, I invited all the viewers. We uh, played some life-size beer pong, we played foosball, played flip cup. I don't remember a lot of these things being played or filmed, but it looks like we had a really good time. Uh, my buddy Kurt was there. He flew in from Saskatchewan. He always makes fun of me for saying that wrong. If you don't remember where that is, I drew a map a while back, kind of illustrating where it is in relation to a few other places. Um, uh, let's see, yeah, Check Race Charles came in from uh, San Francisco, and some people came in from Minnesota and all over. It was really, really cool. Great to meet a lot of the viewers. There was one notable person who I thought was going to be there who didn't end up showing up, though. Joey, you ghosted me on my birthday, man. Why would you do that? All right, um, let's just go ahead. Let's just get into the episode. Special night here at the Westgate. We're celebrating Andrew winning two American Poker Awards, including Personality of the Year. That's the biggest one out there. And we're also celebrating my 30th birthday. Lots of interesting people in the poker world showed up. We've got plenty of poker vloggers. And we've also got WPT champion and 2012 main event runner-up, Jesse Sylvia. I buy into the game for a thousand. We get into the action right away. Here we pick up Ace-10 of Hearts in the cutoff and we open to 15. Small blind calls, he's not a big fan of folding, tends to call a little bit light sometimes. The flop comes king 6-6 six, six with two hearts, so we've got a flush draw, one over, and a backdoor straight draw. Small blind checks, I bet 20 as a semi bluff. The small blind calls, I mainly put them on small to medium pocket pairs. He could have a smaller flush draw, he could also have a king, but I imagine he would have 3-bet some of his stronger kings pre-flop. The turn is the jack of spades, small blind checks. We picked up a gut shot. It's another card that should be better for our range than it is for our opponents. We fire 55. Small blind won't go away. He calls again. The river is the nine of clubs. No help to us. The opponent checks for a third time. We're not beating much, but we've shown aggression all the way through. We're trying to tell a consistent story and it doesn't feel like our opponent's too strong. May have a busted flush draw or a flush draw that turned into a pair. Could have king queen or king 10. All these hands would have a hard time calling a big third bet from us, so I'd go for it. I unload the chamber and bet 140. The opponent tanks for a considerable amount of time before owning my soul and making the call with King-10 offsuit. It was one of the hands we were thinking could possibly fold, but we didn't get it through. We lose a medium-sized pot right away and have to reload for another 300. Not too long after, I pick up pocket kings on the button. Three players limp in ahead of me. I raise to 30. The big blind calls, he was the nemesis in the previous hand. Two of the limpers call as well, so we go four ways to the flop. It comes 9-4-3 with two spades and one diamond. The opponents check, I bet 65. The big blind calls, the remaining players fold. Put the big blind on a big hand or a big draw. He was the first caller and he called out of position, so he shouldn't be calling light when he had two other players left to act behind him. The turn is the five of diamonds, the big blind checks, I check back for pot control and to somewhat disguise my hand. The river is the seven of hearts. Not a great card. There are four cards out to the straight now. I'm not sure what combinations my opponent could have that contain a six though, given the action so far. The big blind leads for a hundred. With the front door flush draw missing and with my hand being slightly underrepped, I don't consider folding in this situation. I make the call. The big blind turns over a queen jack of diamonds, so he floated the flop very light, which I was surprised about. He turned a ton of outs. Fortunately, he didn't get there. We went a good chunk back, and just like that, we're nearly unstuck. The night gets even better as Nick from Wales brings me an extremely nice bottle of whiskey. There's Nick throwing the thumbs up sign. 
Moments later, I head over to his table and I pick up pocket tens under the gun. I raise to 15. Middle position player calls, as does the cutoff. We go three ways to the flop. Dealer puts out 977 rainbow. Should have the best hand. We want to bet in order to deny equity from hands containing over cards and also to get value from lower pocket pairs and hands containing a nine. I bet 25. The middle position player lets his hand go. We do manage to get one customer in the cutoff. We're heads up now. The turn is a deuce. I bet 65. Again, I don't want to give any free cards. I still feel like we have the best hand. Cutoff goes into the tank. Then he calls. Seems like he might suspect I'm bluffing and perhaps is calling light. The river's another deuce, so we got a clean run out. If we were ahead on the flop, we should still be ahead. I bet 150, hoping to get a hero call from hands like pocket eights or sixes, or perhaps a lower pocket pair. Instead, the cutoff lets it go. We scoop the pot. Almost one orbit later, we're dealt ace-king offsuit under the gun plus one and open to 15. The hijack calls, as does the button. The button's Nick, who gave me the whiskey earlier. The three of us see the flop. It's ace-five deuce with two hearts. Great flop for us. We've got top top. I bet 25. The hijack calls. Nick calls as well. The ace on the board being a heart makes it a lot less likely that we're up against a flush draw. I don't have to be worried about that quite as much, but with two colors, it's still somewhat scary. Could also be up against a set, maybe a pocket pair of threes or fours, and probably at least one player has an ace with a worse kicker. The turn is the ten of clubs. Not a great card. Someone could certainly have ace ten. I check to see what my opponents do. The hijack checks, which I'm very happy about. I thought that he would be the most likely opponent to have me beat. I don't think the, the button would have just flatted with me betting and the hijack calling on the flop if he had two pair or better. The button does bet though. He bets 60. Certainly not going to fold at this point. I call. The hijack folds. I'm glad it's heads up. The river is the seven of spades. I've got two options now. I can either go into check call mode or I can lead out. If I check, I may be able to get some missed flush draws and make a bluff attempt when ordinarily they might fold to a bet from me. The problem with checking is that most one pair hands that I'm beating could check back, so I wouldn't get value from those. I elect to target the one pair hands and I bet 140. If I get raised, I'll just let my hand go. The Welshman, no, not, not that Welshman, a different Welshman, my buddy Nick. He reluctantly makes the call. I turn over the Ace King. He lets out a sigh. He shows ace queen, so I've got him notched by one. Unlucky for him. I feel bad, but not too bad because I've got plenty of chips and plenty of pizza now. Life's pretty good. All right, let's play a game called How Many Vloggers Can You Spot in This Clip? You see Check Race Charles on my immediate left at the same table as me. Then there's the Poker Priest. Finally, you see the Poker Kraut showing off his incredible dance moves. Pretty, pretty awesome. You know, you can only learn those in Germany. Back to the game. In this one, we've got ace-queen offsuit in the cutoff. The hijack opens to 15. I want a three bet. I've seen some Euro kids do it. It looks like a lot of fun. I make it 50. The big blind who short stacked makes the call with only 150 left. So this sets off some alarm bells in my head. The hijack calls as well. The three of us see the flop. It's 984 with two clubs. Not what we were hoping for. The big blind jams. The hijack snap calls. I let it go, the board runs out, and the big blind has pocket tens, but they're no good. The hijack turns over a set of fours to win it. Aside from losing the last hand, the night's going great. We got an amazing turnout and filled up the room. This gentleman here, his name's Jeff. He brought me another birthday present. He knows I like cats, and his mom handmade one for me, so thanks to Jeff and to Jeff's mom. After heading back to the table, we're dealt ace, king, and clubs in the cutoff. It's a straddle pot. We opened to 40. My good buddy Check Race Charles is the button straddler. He makes the call. We're heads up, and the board is ace seven deuce with two clubs. Dream flop. We have top pair, top kicker to go along with our nut flush draw. I bet 35. Charles comes along. He makes the call. The turn is the eight of hearts. Now I fire out for 100. It's two thirds the size of the pot. Maybe a little bit too much. Charles isn't interested for that amount. He lets it go. We take it down. Time to head over to the last table of the night. Jesse Sylvia is there with his fiance Ashley. He's crushing the game. He's up about 2K. Turns out Jesse and I were both born on February 26th. We share the same birthday. And a few guys from the UK bought us and Andrew a shot of tequila to celebrate. Unfortunately, we weren't given any salt. You can see by the looks on our faces that uh, it was pretty rough. 
Now that Jesse and I are liquored up, we head back to the table. I'm dealt ace-king offsuit in the hijack. Player under the gun plus one opens to 15. The action's on Jesse. He three bets to 60. The action's now on us. It's a tricky spot. Jesse and I are both very deep for a 2-5 game. Jesse's been extremely active so far. It could be three betting with a wide range. I go with the cold four bet and I make it 200. I don't think there's anything wrong with flatting a three bet, but I prefer to take control of the pot and give myself an opportunity to win it pre-flop. The under the gun plus one player lays his hand down. The action's back on Jesse. I wouldn't mind a fold here. Not all that interested in playing a huge pot with someone who's a lot better than I am. It's not what happens though. He calls for 140 more. The two of us see the flop. It's king 5-4. Very, very relieved that I made a pair in this huge four bet pot. Jesse checks, should have the best hand. The tequila shot might've gotten to me because I misclick and I accidentally make it 250. Till I rewatched this video, I thought I made it 175. Instead of grabbing three green chips and one black one, I accidentally grabbed two green, two black chips. Not terrible to bet 250, but we're betting our hand for value and we're trying to get calls out of hands that are worse than ours that would have called our four bet preflop. Those would be hands like queens or jacks and those hands most likely won't be able to call 250 on the flop, especially from out of position. Actually like an even smaller bet, maybe 125 or 140 and a check wouldn't be bad either. Jesse thinks for just a short time, then he lays his hand down. He said he had pocket queens, so good fold by him. I'm glad I won the hand, but I definitely lost value by betting too much. That was the last big one. It's almost 1.30 a.m. We've been playing for over six hours. I've got 1,700 in front of me. I'm in for 1,300, so I booked a nice profit. Time to rack up and head to the bar before calling it a night. That's it for this one guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section and I'll definitely get back to you. Uh, I wanna give a big thanks to everybody who showed up to Gold Spike for my birthday and for the meetup game. Andrew and I really enjoy doing these types of things. It's a ton of fun for us to hang out and meet all the viewers. Um, feel free to go to Joe Ingram's social media sites and ask him why he goes to me uh, on my 30th because that one, hurt pretty bad and it's gonna take a long time to get over it. No, just kidding. Um, yeah, it's all just a joke. But uh, the birthday festivities didn't end after the meetup game. The Westgate offered to uh, comp me a meal for my birthday. They said I could go anywhere I wanted to go and I chose to go to Edge Steakhouse. I had an amazing dinner there. Uh, I had several courses. Uh, the chef is Steve Young, which is incredible. After playing football for that many years to go into the culinary arts is very impressive. Okay, uh, different, different Steve Young, um, Chef Steve Young. He is uh, well known around the Vegas area, one of the top 40 people under 40 and a uh, super cool guy. He hooked it up. Uh, the gnocchi was really, really good. And then for the main course, I had lobster tail and a tomahawk steak, which was amazing. And the dessert was uh, really good as well. So if you guys are ever in Vegas or if you're ever coming out to a meetup game at the Westgate, be sure to stop by the steakhouse there and uh, get yourself a meal before we have a lot of drinks, probably. Um, Next meetup game is gonna be in Montreal, Canada at the Playground Club. Andrew and I are both going out there shortly and we're gonna play some 2-5. If you're in the area, come hang out, have some drinks, play some poker with us. Uh, everything's gonna get started, I believe, at 7 p.m. Hope you guys are all doing well. Good luck at the tables and I'll see you next time.